Hey guys, The Network Berg here. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, we'll be covering BGP. Uh, we'll be looking at the configuration on Mikrotik routers for it. And I'll just be giving you a quick uh, brief explanation on what BGP is. So BGP is a routing protocol, obviously. It is a distance vector protocol, or you, you might uh, hear people call it a path vector protocol. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it is the routing protocol of choice for the internet. So it is used to exchange routing information between autonomous system numbers. So where OSPF and ISIS works within one autonomous system, BGP is exchanging that information to its neighbor, which could be in a different autonomous system. So you could see this between ISPs, you could see this between companies. Um, this is how you would peer with another service provider to learn their routes and also give them your routes. So that is what we use BGP for. Uh, it's a very important protocol. You do get two different versions. Not I, I want to talk about the versions. Uh, let's just say you, you get eBGP, which is the external BGP, which we, we just discussed. And then you get iBGP, which uh, works in similar fashion to OSPF because you're connecting within the same autonomous system, but it's really not what BGP was developed for. It was developed in order to exchange routes between autonomous systems. So let's use it for that. Um, you'll see on our topology, I've used the same lab. We've already got a nice core network here, so I'm not going to destroy that um, just to show you BGP. So you already saw the environment. You know what kind of is happening here on our routers. They're exchanging routes between each other using OSPF, this MPLS configure, this cool stuff like VPLS. And now we're going to set up the BGP. So the only thing that you actually see that's changed on the topology from the last time, well, I've exchanged those Cisco routers out for Mikrotik routers, and we've added these little blocks, and we've said AS412. <laughs> and that is the autonomous system that we're going to give to this router. And the same thing on CE2 is going to get AS412. And then if you look at the core network, which is the provider edge now, it's 64521. These are the autonomous systems that I will be assigning within these um, provider edge routers. Because BGP, it will connect to a neighbor. It's not going to do like what OSPF is doing, where it's broadcasting, where it's point to multipoint, and it's connecting to all the different routers. It is connecting to a neighbor that you specify, that you tell it to connect to, and what it's going to do with that neighbor. That That's the beauty of BGP as well. So it's only going to listen to its neighbor. It's not going to listen to everybody else. Um, so let's jump into the configuration. I'm just quickly going to do CE1 first, and I'll do this via the command line. So let's just jump on there. And the only thing I've done so far is added IP address information um, on these routers. So they are pretty blank as well. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a BGP instance. So to do that, we're going to go into routing BGP instance. What we're going to do is we're going to add an instance. We can call the instance whatever we like. Uh, what you might see people tend to do is also they might call an instance data and voice, and these might be in separate VRFs. Um, but since this is going to be a pretty straightforward setup, we're just going to add one instance. So let's just call this data name equals data. Another important thing is our router ID, just like the OSPF. Um, so I haven't given these loopback addresses or anything. So I'm just going to use my WAN IP address as the router ID. That is 10.60.0.2. And now we need to also just specify, let's see, we're not going to use any of the other information here except the AS we need to define still. So the AS, that's the autonomous system, is going to be 412. So there's a bunch of other nice options. The confederation, it's a bit, it, I won't say it's irrelevant, but you won't really be working with that. Uh, Redress Butte is very important, uh, but that's just to advertise routes through. Uh, this instance, but we'll manually add the network, so don't worry about it. Uh, Root ID we added and the routing table. Like I said, you might have a voice VRF, and then you can specify it there so that the voice routes are in a different routing table. So let's just add our instance. It's done. 
BGP instance added. Now we need to add our routing BGP peer. So our peer, you, you should already understand what it's saying. It's peering, it's connecting to something else. So this is where we're going to define where it's going to connect to. So in my case, it's going to be this PE3. So I'm going to add a peer. We can call it um, peer to PE3. Okay. Important things to add for the BGP is your remote address. So that's the IP address of the remote side. So that will be 10.60.0.1, which is a WAN IP of assigned here. And then our remote AS, very important as well. So this will be 64521. Is there anything else that we want? Because those are the base values, you need that. You need an address and you need the remote AS. Uh, the rest is pretty irrelevant. You can add nice things like some security with MD5. Um, currently, Mikrotik doesn't support uh, BGPsec. So that's where you basically encrypt that tunnel in an IPsec tunnel. You, you can manually do it, but it's not like an option that you have here. Um, a lot of the current routing providers do give you, or router providers give you that. Oh, and this default originate, but we'll use that on the provider edge. Uh, and I'll explain what that does when we add it. So no, we're not going to use any of the other settings. We're just going to leave the rest as default, hit enter, done, done, dusted, it's finished. Um, that's BGP folks. <laughs> um, yeah, so don't, don't stress when you think about BGP. It's not such a difficult routing protocol as people try and make it out to be. Um, so I'm going to log on to this PE now and I'm basically going to do the reverse. I'm just going to specify my own autonomous systems and I'm going to use CE1 as my peer now. So routing BGP instance add our name will be, let's just call it data as well, just for consistency. We're going to specify our autonomous system, which was 64521. And we need to specify our router ID. And in this case, it was 4.4.4.4. Hit enter, done. And now I'm going to add my routing BGP peer. I'm going to add a peer. Uh, so this will be peer to CE1. I need to add my remote AS, which is 412. And I need to add my remote address, which is 10.60.0.2. Okay, so I'm gonna add one more option now because w when I hit enter, the BGP will connect, it will come up. Um, that's BGP. I just need to maybe make sure, okay, the interfaces are enabled, so we should be fine. So, I'm going to go onto this router. I'm going to do IP route print. It's going to be very barren because there is nothing set up except for this WAN address. So I'm going to use this default originate. I'm going to tell it always. So what default originate does is it's telling this router to send out its default route. If you use always, it will always send out a 0, .0, .0, slash 0 route to its neighbor. So be careful with this as well. If you put this option on the wrong router, you might accidentally advertise the default route of your whole network. So let's say if we put it on CE1 and I, I use default originate and it came into this uh, PE and this PE was accidentally uh, redistributing that default route to all the routers, then all my routers will suddenly try and break out through CE1 and I would have broken my internet. I would have broken the network. So things to take note of, be careful with that. But we will just um, do this on the PE. It is safe there because we're now just sending it to our CE. I'm going to hit enter. And then we can do an IP or we can do routing BGP peer print. And then we can see if the peer is here. It's using the default instance. Okay, that's that's 
one thing that I forgot to do and we're gonna have to fix that quickly. So routing BGP peer, since we added an instance, we didn't leave it on the default, we just need to specify that instance as well. So I'm just going to set the instance to data for the first BGP peer. I'm going to do the same on the other router. If you use default, it's fine as well. You can do that, it's not an issue. Okay, so if I look at it now, it should come up. Yes, it is up now, it is established. And it shows me my remote AS and what the remote address is. So let's quickly go to CE1. And when I do a IP route print, I'm now receiving my default route from my provider edge. So if there is internet set up, this router will have breakout. It will be able to get to the rest of the network. Um, but there might be some issues with the rest of the network getting to it because the rest of the network is not learning this address yet. But if we had another port configured and it plugged into a customer switch or into one of our switches and it's got a LAN range and we advertise that on this router uh, with the OSPF would work totally fine. It would be just fine. You, you'd actually um, advertise it with the BGP from this router to PE3 and then PE3 would just redistribute it to all of the other routers. Um, that's BGP in a nutshell. It's been configured on the command line. I just quickly want to show you how to do this in Winbox as well because I do know some people use only Winbox and it is quite easy to set it up on Winbox. Um, so same thing, I've configured just the WAN address here, but I have uh, set up a route to my management range from CE2 to PE5. And also I've advertised um, the CE, this WAN range from PE5 on the OSPF. So I can connect to that 10.60.1.2, going to log in. So this is the CE now. So what I'm quickly going to do is I'm going to go into my routing, I'm going to go into BGP. I'm going to click on the plus, I'm going to add my data. This is the instance now. I'm adding, remember we added a name, data, my autonomous system, which was 412, and my router ID, which I'll just make the WAN address again. And all the other options we had in the command line just now, which we didn't use, but you can, but you don't have to. This is just a basic configuration of BGP. So we've added our data instance, we're going to add our peer. So we click on the peer, click on the plus, the name, peer to PE5 instance, which I forgot to add earlier. You just hit data, remote address. So that's going to be the IP address of my neighbor that I can connect to, very important. If you can't connect to it, it won't do anything either, dot one. We're not gonna use any of the other settings just now and we can hit apply. Oh, I forgot to add the peer. Uh, let me just quickly see what the peer was. 64521, 64521, and now we can apply. So we've added the peer from the PE on Winbox. Let's just do the same on the, well, on the CE, I mean. So let's just jump onto the PE. Same process, click routing, BGP, add the instance. So we can call this um, data again, six, four, what did I make that? Six, four, five, two, one, six, four, five, two, one. Router ID will be 5.5.5.5, hit apply. Go into the peers. Add a peer, again, this is my neighbor to CE2. So peer to CE2. I'm using my data instance and my remote address will be 10.60.1.2 and my remote AS 412. I'm gonna hit apply. Well, before I hit apply, remember there was one more thing that I added and that was the default originate. So here's that option to send out the default route if installed, will only send out the default route or route if it has it. If, if there's no 0.0.0.0, .0 route on this router, it will not send it out. But if you hit always, it will just send out that default route. So let's quickly apply that 
and see if the peer connects it has connected it's established and it's done that is bgp i hope this video has been informative i'd like to thank you for watching and i'll post some more videos in the future very soon um, again i'd also like to just uh, ask again if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please consider doing so it helps grow the channel and if you like the video it also helps out a ton resharing the video can also help me out so thanks so much again for watching catch you again soon bye